And setting the IFM flow meters, it helps to have a tool to push the buttons. Here are the buttons on the large IFM flow meter. I have a tool like this. It has a point that's small enough so that it can depress the button and uh, the point is smooth enough so that it doesn't cut the plastic plug over the button. It also has a handle uh, so that uh, you know, your hand won't be injured by pressing this dozens of times. So here's the large IFM flow meter. We want, the first setting we want to check is for OU2. And we press the enter button once to get in to the settings and then we hit the down arrow to go through the various settings. OU2 is the one that we care about. Uh, it should indicate I for current root output. The next setting we want to check is uh, ASP2. This is the uh, low end of the flow. It should be zero if it is. We want to check AEP2. This is the end point or the high end of the range. It should read 900 for 900 liters per minute. It's the equivalent of 237.7 gallons per minute. The next one we want to check has to do with uh, FOU2, that setting. So we go down. This is EF for the extended functions. Press it to get in that. Hit the down arrow to get to the CFG entry. Uh, this exposes FOU1, which we don't care about, but FOU2, we do care about. And verify that it says OU. And this forces the, the flow meter to put out a known current even when the maximum flow range has been exceeded. Otherwise, it'll just bounce around. The last one is <clears throat> empty pipe detection. And I'm just pressing the down arrow repeatedly to find it. Now we're back in the extended function menu. And there's EPD for empty pipe detection. Verify that it's on, which it is. At this point, you can walk away from the flow meter, the settings menu will time out, and then write all the th things you've changed into the memory.